so she can't give away the prize anymore because she's dead of AIDS. Freaking hilarious. Today I'm reviewing an Amazon best-selling book, The Truth About HIV. So apparently, according to this book, the truth about HIV is that it doesn't exist. Now that's a mighty big call because if you do a search on PubMed for HIV, you get about 17,000 published papers on it. So let's have a look at the truth about HIV. So who is it that's going to tell us the truth about HIV? There must be pretty heavy hitters in the medical field because they're going against 17,000 published papers on the topic of HIV. So who are these guys? Well, The Truth About HIV is written by Philip Day and Steve Ransom. Uh, I got fed up with a number of uh, members of my family who were dying of cancer. I thought there must be an easier way. There must be ways in which people are avoiding this illness number one, and secondly, being able to get out and uh, from underneath it and be able to recover. And my research found that that was exactly what the case was. So it would appear that Philip Day is actually a cancer researcher, not a HIV researcher. But that's okay, maybe he's a hard-hitting, really, you know, important cancer researcher. Let's see what sort of uh, cancer research he's done. Let's look at for Philip Day in uh, PubMed. So PubMed search for Day P, publishing in the field of cancer, does actually return eight hits. Um, and uh, there is a Philip J.R. Day, um, but unfortunately that's not our Philip Day, because Philip J.R. Day is from the University of Manchester. And there's also a PM Day, but that's not our guy either, because he's from the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda. Our Philip Day is from Credence Publications, and it turns out he's not so much a cancer researcher, but he's a British health reporter. Or he's a investigative journalist and international speaker. Uh, but it was nutrition and lifestyle related, not drug related. And that's how these uh, cultures who live vast lifespans without any cancer or heart problems uh, are doing it. So Philip Day is from Credence Publications. And Credence Publications is an internet bookseller that sells medical books such as Charcoal Remedies and Coconut Cures. It also has the definitive book on how vaccines are dangerous and don't work. And it also has Day's views on how the UK is going to be taken over by France and Germany in the very near future. Uh, the way medicine today is treating disease with drugs is actually akin to insanity. Philip Day, it turns out, is not an investigative journalist and he's not a researcher. He is a, a slick snake oil salesman carrying on the long tradition of snake oil salesmen, travelling the world, pushing bogus medical cures. So that's one author on the truth about HIV, Philip Day. Who's the other author? Well, that is Steve Ransom. Um, but I don't have very much information about him. Hopefully he is a hard-hitting um, biologist that can uh, give us the truth about AIDS. Hopefully he's a well-researched and, you know, really hard-hitting sort of guy. Um, he's very shy though there's no information on his author page on the uh, on amazon and his google plus page is also very short on information um, but we'll have a look in pubmed shall we for ransom steve ransom s under uh, hiv oh no results and oh look let's look under electron microscopy no results there either so, couldn't come up with much about Steve Ransom. Uh, he doesn't look like he's published anything except this book and one other self-published book. Um, yeah, he, uh, he seems like he's a nobody. But uh, what I did find, I did find him uh, being a uh, climate change denying buffoon. You see, once again, it's absolutely scorching. Temperatures 
high 40s and it's only going to get hotter. Ooh. In actual fact, these are tiny white grains of sand. But enough of these ad hominem attacks. What does the book actually have to say? Well, luckily we've got some information. I didn't have to read the book itself. Thank goodness for that. But we do have the author, Steve Ransom, uh, on a podcast giving us all the details about his evidence for the non-existence of HIV. So let's have a listen, shall we? Yeah. So uh, talking about you, you don't believe that HIV exists. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about other uh, similar retroviruses like SIV or FIV? Uh, do you think they exist or not? Let's go on to Google Images after this podcast and type in... A, a, type in any virus mm -hmm. and what you will get is you will not get one single photograph of an actual virus you will always get a computer generated image of what a small group of scientists think the virus looks like so this guy's first bit of evidence that hiv doesn't exist is apparently the fact that when you do a google image search for viruses you only get cartoon computer generated images and not images of actual viruses so let's see if he's correct let's try such a google image search shall we let's search for hiv virus and see what we get yes we do get a large number of cartoonish looking computer drawn interpretations of what the hiv virus looks like so i guess He's right, there is no HIV virus. But hang on, let's try a different search term, shall we? Let's try HIV virus, let's say electron micrograph. HIV virus electron micrograph and see what we get. Oh, look at that. Lots of images that aren't, don't look like computer generated images. Lots of images that actually look like actual electron micrographs of actual viruses. Wow, let's see what else we can prove doesn't exist using this sort of logic. Let's search for, say, mouse and see what we get. Oh, look at all these cartoon mice. Wow, I guess mice don't exist. Or we could search for mouse images instead. So, yeah, with Google Image Search, you can find cartoon pictures of mice and actual pictures of real mice. This does not mean that mice don't exist. So it ain't that hard. This is a cartoon mouse. And this is a photo of an actual mouse. Can you tell the difference? Similarly, this is a cartoon of a HIV virus. And this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this are all electron micrographs of the actual HIV virus. The electron microscope was invented in the 30s, and the first computer, the ENIAC, was invented in 1946. So scientists have been taking pictures with electron microscopes from before the invention of the computer. So these images do not need a computer to be produced. Sure, they might be using a computer these days in the modern electron microscope, just like you use a computer to take a photograph. But uh, yeah, they're not computer generated images. They are electron micrographs of the actual HIV virus. There will not be one single uh, actual HIV entity anywhere in Google Images. So it would appear that his first bit of evidence for the non-existence of HIV is complete bollocks because a Google image search, if you know how to use Google search, will bring you up many images of actual pictures of the HIV virus. You type in electron microscope images or scanning electron microscope image of HIV, you will, it will return you with an image of a scanning image of, a, of the virus. Well, then, in that case, then, why haven't, why haven't these people who have got this image claimed the £10,000 prize that is still up on offer for those that can give a clearly identifiable um, evidence of an actual photograph of a virus? Why has no one claimed these prizes? That's because they are pseudo-prizes, 
if you go to the website to find out the information about the terms and conditions to actually claim these prizes, there are no terms and conditions there. And if you actually then go to make an inquiry about it, you find that these prizes have actually been withdrawn. And what's quite amusing is one of the reasons why one of the prizes was being withdrawn is because it was being offered by a very famous AIDS denier who has since died of AIDS. So she can't give away the prize anymore because she's dead of AIDS. Freaking hilarious. So as I mentioned, uh, the prizes that uh, Ransom is talking about here are actually not on offer anymore. But if you uh, go to the internet uh, archive, you can see uh, what the conditions of the prizes were. And uh, this illustrates the point um, of what you'll see if you look at similar prizes like this. There'll be usually sort of a stumbling block that's built into the prize that makes it impossible to win. Um, and in this case, the, the clause that it means it is impossible to win is this one here that says it has to be an infectious retrovirus. Um, now, there's plenty of experiments that have purified HIV and confirmed that it's an infectious retrovirus, but they infect human cell lines with it um, and prove that it's infectious. But when you go to claim one of these prizes, um, the people that are offering the prize will tell you, well, no, you have to uh, complete Cox postulates, which is uh, a principle uh, of... Uh, to prove that you have an infectious agent and that the infectious agent causes the disease. Um, it's all a little bit complicated, but basically uh, to, to, to fulfill Cox postulates, you have to isolate the causative agent from someone with the disease, purify it, and then reinfect that person with the causative agent. And quite obviously, there's a few ethical reasons why you can't actually perform this experiment, experiment with human beings. Uh, the guy that, that came up with these postulates, his name was Mr. Cock or Dr. Cock. Um, and uh, I believe he was experimenting uh, with sheep when he developed these, these uh, postulates. So um, you can do a lot more ethically with sheep than you can do with human beings. So this is why this prize has not been given away, because it would be absolutely unethical to the to perform the experiments that uh, the people on this page uh, want you to perform. Both the ELISA test and the Western Blot test contain inserts from the manufacturers saying that this test is not is not 100% accurate. It's a massive limitation because but, because if 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 the HIV test responds positively to some hmm. 60 different conditions unrelated to any alleged virus, yeah. but that it, means that hundreds of uh, thousands of people out there have the potential of being false positively tested. Yeah. Steve, this is so stupid. This could be its own logical fallacy. Argumentum package insertium. I mean, <coughs> package inserts have no data on the prevalence of these issues. So you're taking a book out of that vaccine deniers handbook where they look at package inserts and where they've got lists of possible side effects from the vaccine as if these side effects happen at some large fraction of the of the times. You don't have to look at the package insert to see what the you know prevalence of false positives or false negatives are. You can actually look in the in the literature and find out. And if you happen to do that, you would maybe stumble across this paper that reports that the actual probability of getting a false positive when you have a conf confirmatory Western blot, and you're talking about a low prevalence setting for HIV, so like in the example when you're talking about just that you're a random pregnant woman, the chances of getting a false positive are one in 250,000. One in a quarter of a million. How can the HIV test be as useless as you're trying to suggest when you know it's made our blood supply safe for this for a start and uh, it's been used for 30 years? You don't think uh, you know clin clinicians would have noticed that um, it's giving lots of false positives? Yeah, people who don't have any of those other conditions that the test can can be positive for. I mean, why do they why why do they then test positive if the virus doesn't exist? Because 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 what the because what the test does it measures levels of antibody activity and there can be all sorts of reasons. Yeah. A, a, antibody activity is just an indication that your, that your immune system is working well. You, you moron! The HIV test 
detect specific antibodies. They detect antibodies that your body has made specifically against proteins in the HIV virus. The HIV test is not detecting antibodies, general antibodies. You moron. Antibody activity is just an indication that your, that your immune system is working well. You know. tend to be quite specific. I mean, why would someone have the antibodies to GP120, GP41 or ERV in their system? Well, guys, I think, you know, like when you, when you talk about ERV and GP21, mm. etc., you're moving into the realms that I don't understand in terms of in terms of because yeah. I haven't been there to understand what no. you're talking about. Yes, it's quite obvious you don't understand. But if you don't understand, why do you write a fucking book called The Truth About HIV when you quite obviously don't understand the truth about HIV? But the principles remain the same. Yeah. You will be talking about... My, I, I would, I'd be fair... To, I'd be, I think I'd be quite um, within my... I wouldn't feel scared to put my neck out and say that what we're probably talking about there are viruses that you're talking about that are actually once again in an inferred image that a group of highly specialised scientists believe are there because their deductions lead them to that conclusion as opposed to something on okay. a reality on a plate. The truth about HIV is that you know nothing about HIV, do you? No, he's not talking about viruses. He's talking about the proteins that go to make up the HIV virus. He's not talking about viruses. He's not talking about something that's a figment of a scientist's imagination. He's talking about proteins that can be purified, proteins that can be sequenced, proteins that can be cloned, proteins that can be put onto the ELISA plates and be used to capture antibodies out of people's bloods, proving they've been exposed to HIV. You fucking People who voice an opinion that runs contrary yeah. to conventional ideals yeah. are crushed into non I will, I will concede. People who uh, uh, voice like opinions that don't agree with the rest of science are crushed in the ground. People who present evidence are accepted and the field moves forward. Me looking at this, I can see scanning electron microscope images, transmission electron images, I can see antibody tagged HIV, I can see PCR products, I can see the genome, I can see antibodies reacting to it, I can see people who have cloned it into other, other things using the HIV capsule to make treatments for things like leukemia. Leukemia? If, guys, if the virus think... doesn't exist, that, that, no. that, that shouldn't happen. What would you like to see that proves that HIV exists? I mean, what would you like to see that would prove to you that it's a thing? Um, well, what I would like to see is that an actual virus that can be mm -hmm. shown in a microscope to be wriggling around, injected into a healthy person, yeah. and then watch that person degenerate mm -hmm. and die horribly, wasting away, I'm, with, I'm, no I'm, mitig with, with no mitigating factors surrounding yeah. that person's wasting away. What are they... What are they Piece, what are they? What are they amplifying up? What is, what is the the stuff there? And it's and it's not just random noise because they can then go on to sequence it and find it's exactly the same in other people who've been infected by by their partners, by their in some cases by their dentists, or in one one very unfortunate case, three um, technicians were infected from a lab strain of HIV, which was cultivated in the lab, changed slightly, and then they were able to detect the exact same changes in those three people when they PCR them. What what, are, what what in your mind are they are they seeing there? You've 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 intellectually leapt from us saying okay, well the HIV test has got its limitations, to then mm -hmm. quoting all sorts of to what some people would consider you know like quite closed off science, and then saying they they reacted you know they were tested positive. How were they tested? Yeah. They were tested with both antibody tests and PCR. If if there was some sort of random amplification happening, you'd expect to find different random patterns across these di three different people. And you don't. You find exactly the same pattern. And when you go back to the lab stock they were infected with, again, you find the same sequence. And obviously, it's not your field. So <laughs> James, I, don't, you I see, don't expect you to... to... No, no, no. It, it's, it's not my field. But, you see, but I come from a different field. And it's, I think, encapsulated wonderfully by Max Planck. And he says that science progresses... He says science progresses funeral by funeral.
Yeah, science may well progress funeral by funeral, but uh, where are all the young scientists that are coming in that are uh, supporting your HIV doesn't exist hypothesis? There are none. Um, Duisberg is about the only uh, scientist that's in the uh, you know HIV doesn't cause AIDS camp, and uh, he's 78, so um, his funeral, you know there's going to be no one left supporting this, you know, HIV doesn't cause AIDS uh, hypothesis in the science community. There's a new paper added to the scientific literature on HIV once every two days from my analysis of the PubMed database. And I can guarantee you that these papers are not papers publishing on the fact that HIV doesn't exist. They're working on HIV. Real. HIV, something that exists. They're not imagining it. They're not worth it. They're not in some fantasy land like you. Scientists' funerals can come and go. Uh, HIV is real. Is would you be willing to infect yourself with the virus if there's no such thing? Yes, I would. And you know what? I've said to that. To, I've said that to my wife. I said I would love to get up on t on telly. And I'd love to have somebody give me a drop of blood that's supposedly ravaged by HIV. And I'd put it, I'd prick my finger and I'd do it. Except for, and this, and believe me guys, whoever is mm -hmm. listening, the only thing that would stop me from doing it is because I know that that would, if I was a sick, if I didn't have three lovely children and a lovely wife. Because you know that would what, Steve? It's interesting how that sentence didn't really go anywhere. It seems especially like you're about to say, because I know that would make me sick or something. But then you changed it. That's very suspicious. Let's hear that again. Listening, the only thing that would stop me from doing it is because I know that, that would, if I was a sick, it is because I know that, that would, it is because I know that, that would, if I was a sick, if I was a sick, if I didn't have three lovely children and a lovely wife. Listening. The only thing that would stop me from doing it is because I know that, that would. If I was a sick, if I didn't have three lovely children and a lovely wife, yeah. because I have a family and children who would reap the whirlwind of my stupidity as a husband and father, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it. Yes, Steve, it's really unclear about why you wouldn't inject yourself with HIV. It seems like you are actually scared of injecting yourself with HIV. It's kind of as if, you, as if you've got this theoretical sort of construct where one world where you believe that HIV doesn't exist and this is your theoretical world and then you've got your other world which is your real life world where you've got a wife and children and the potential for dying and uh, yeah in one, HIV does exist, and in the other, HIV doesn't exist. I think uh, we've just had a revelation about uh, your mental state here, and how you live in two different worlds. You do bang on about two different worlds quite a bit. Um, very interesting.